Hello watch lovers, friends old and new, welcome back to the channel. My name is Stian and today we're gonna do something different. We have a seagull watch on the bench. We're actually gonna give this watch away at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. Seagull sent me this watch for uh, making this review. They actually sent me two watches, so I'm gonna give away uh, the other one as well. First thing we might notice is that the packaging isn't really that exciting. It's uh, quite okay, but uh, keep in mind that this is a very affordable watch. The manual strangely seems to have all the different movements that Seagull makes instead of uh, just the one relevant for this specific watch. But with a little bit of uh, searching, we find the ST2502. That's the movement number. Now, if we uh, look at the watch itself, it doesn't have an actual model name, but it does have uh, the sexy code uh, D819.622. They are uh, running a promotion for uh, this watch now, so I'll put that link in the description as well. This is a kind of classical uh, dress watch, quite uh, big and also uh, really thick. We'll uh, see a bit more of the reason for that uh, as we go along. See the case is uh, nicely finished, nothing uh, spectacular, just uh, polished all the way. Relatively simple case design, has a display back as uh, all modern watches should in my view. Roman numerals and you have this uh, two sub dials. They're actually for showing the weekday on the left and the date on the right. And uh, I think it's a pretty cool feature, this uh, open heart at uh, 6 o'clock. Not only does it show the balance, but there's also some sort of triangular uh, flywheel looking thing there that uh, rotates. Has no function, but uh, I suppose it adds to uh, the design. There are two pushers in the side of the case, which can of course be used to uh, quick set the weekday and the date. Otherwise, the weekday and date also changes automatically uh, once you uh, turn the hands through midnight. So we are going to pick this watch apart, but let's also have a quick look at uh, the second watch they sent me. It's a little bit uh, sportier, I suppose, and also uh, quite a bit bigger. Still the same dial layout, more or less the same movement. But this one uh, then also has a rotating inner bezel. And we see it has a pusher at uh, the four o'clock position. Kind of looks like a chronograph when you just see that uh, like that, but uh, it's not a chronograph. And then you have the pusher in the case side on the other side for the weekday. Quite a handsome watch, I think. Bigger. It looks uh, quite good on the wrist as well. It's a fairly big watch, this one. It's about uh, 42 millimeters case size, but then 52 millimeters lug to lug. While the one we're gonna dissect in this video is a little bit smaller. Also 42 in the case size, but then about 48 millimeters lug to lug. So still a pretty big watch, at least uh, when you're used to uh, vintage watches. On the time grapher we see the watch is uh, running just fine. Perhaps a little bit fast, but uh, that's okay. So let's open this baby up and see what's uh, hiding inside. So I mentioned already that uh, it has an in-house movement. And Seagull is in fact uh, the world's biggest manufacturer of mechanical watch movements, interestingly. But there's of course a difference between uh, quantity and quality. So one of the biggest questions I had going in, uh, because I never worked on a Chinese movement before, is uh, how good is the quality? Now, from the start, we can see that the finishing looks uh, pretty good. That is a little bit um, deceiving now. We'll see that once we start uh, taking things apart. But at first glance, it looks uh, just fine. We can see that uh, the second hand does not uh, move very smoothly, so it's not a high beat movement. It's actually just uh, 21600. And we see it's got uh, beautiful blue hands. 
when I first saw them, I kind of thought about this uh, Poliot chronograph that uh, likely had a Chinese uh, dial in hands. But uh, we'll look at a little bit more at the hands later. One uh, issue I already uh, noticed uh, starting to take the watch apart was that after taking the crown out to get the movement out of the case, it wouldn't go back in properly. So uh, that's why I decided to uh, start with the train side of things so I could uh, let down uh, the power and uh, get things uh, off there before uh, starting disassembling uh, the date and calendar and so forth. Interestingly, the design of this movement uh, looks quite inspired by uh, Seiko in a lot of ways. You might have seen that uh, the dial uh, feet were secured in the same manner as uh, Seiko does. And this balance also looks quite uh, similar to uh, Seiko watches in a lot of ways. Which is interesting given that uh, the Chinese really uh, do not like uh, the Japanese. In large part, of course, due to the atrocities during the Second World War and before. We see that uh, the calendar mechanism is uh, quite simple. Both the weekday and the date is uh, driven from uh, the hour wheel. One thing I uh, noticed as I was taking this apart, there's a lot of screws. A lot of small bridges and uh, most of the screws are of different sizes. Not only different sizes but also different uh, screw uh, slot size. And the thing is when uh, you work on watches uh, one of the first things you uh, want to do is to uh, make sure your uh, screwdrivers are sort of fit for the screw slot. So if you're working on an uh, ETA 2824 you know the screw slot is going to be very wide. So you have to widen uh, the edge of your tip. And here you have both wide and narrow screw slots. So that's a bit uh, inconvenient. Otherwise, we see uh, on the dial side, there's uh, kind of a finish, I suppose. Sort of brushed. I'm not really sure if that's uh, a finish or just uh, machining marks to be honest because there are actually quite a few marks on the movement itself which should obviously not be there in a brand new movement So the movement family is somewhat modular, from what I understand, and that's probably why they have uh, these couple of extra plates. But it does add to the thickness of the movement. Here and there, there were quite a few small puddles of uh, oil. And this cannon pinion, I was really not sure because it didn't want to come out, but I didn't really see why. So it turns out it's just not really machined well enough, I think, the plate, so that uh, there's a tiny little uh, resistance on the side of the plate. So I left it for, uh, for now, and then we'll uh, come back to it after taking off the keyless works. Keyless works are completely standard, at least when it comes to the design, but a little bit disconcerting that uh, it was problematic getting the stem and crown back in after taking uh, the movement out of the case. And with a bit of nudging, uh, we managed to get the cannon pinion out. The winding system also borrows some ideas and uh, I think we can say it's pretty much a function over form because that little spring there is uh, not going to gain any beauty contests. Otherwise a conventional layout 
And here we can see that uh, the finishing uh, is only skin deep, basically. We can see this uh, perlage is a uh, bit irregular. Definitely not uh, done by a human. And also only where it's uh, visible to whoever uh, looks at the watch through the display back. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that this is not in any way an expensive watch. It's going to set you back and just a little bit over a hundred dollars or euros or Swiss francs or whatever you use, but probably less than a hundred uh, British pounds. What? Uh... For that price, I think it's pretty excellent value, to be honest. Even though uh, seeing this discoloration mark on uh, the barrel is strange. One thing I really liked uh, is the hack. I think it's uh, very cool. Somehow I just really like the hack. And here we can see uh, the thickness of this plate. Quite amazing. It's like five millimeters thick. It's kind of crazy. So that, of course, makes it difficult uh, to have a slim watch using this kind of movement. The shock settings are also uh, what seems to be Inca block uh, copies. They do seem to work, however, but uh, I'm not sure Inca block would really appreciate seeing this. Might be that it's uh, licensed, but I didn't see anything saying Inca block, so. Anyway, looking at the automatic module, also very much uh, function over form, only winds in one direction, it has this uh, same kind of uh, very, let's say, pragmatic uh, little spring there. It does work. Now, one of the uh, issues is that I could not find any kind of technical communication for this uh, movement. If anyone knows where they are found, then uh, great if you can put that in the comments. The mainspring is incredibly long. I didn't measure it, but it's uh, definitely longer than uh, most mainsprings I've seen. You can see how it coils up here in the end. All right, that's uh, pretty much all of it. So we see there's a lot of parts for a not too complicated watch and a lot of screws. Let's uh, put the movement through the cleaning machine and then we can start picking up the pieces afterwards. I didn't uh, remark on it as I took uh, the barrel apart. But uh, some might have seen that it was pretty much completely dry, which is uh, not a great thing. Given that it's an automatic, we're going to put a little bit of uh, braking grease. We're using this uh, Kluber product on a few different spots along uh, the barrel wall. And then we're using our trusty mainspring winder to uh, get the mainspring back into the barrel. So let's uh, talk a little bit about Seagull as we uh, go along. As I mentioned uh, in the beginning, they're actually the biggest manufacturer of uh, mechanical watch movements. But I think it's only recently that they started uh, selling watches under their own name. They've been around for longer than uh, probably most people are watching this video, since uh, 1955. So that's a good uh, 65 years uh, ago. 
And probably their most uh, famous model, at least nowadays, is uh, the 1963 Pilot's uh, Chronograph, which I, by the way, think it's a very cool watch for a good price. I haven't had an experience with it myself, but uh, the Chinese did get uh, the original designs from Venus back in uh, the 60s. So uh, I think the movement should be good as well. And the design is uh, it's very nice. China, of course, has a bit of a bad reputation for uh, their relatively open practice of uh, copying uh, designs. You have all these uh, super clones coming out of China, which are uh, very expensive uh, watches. Until you look really closely and then find out it's actually a knockoff. So in that sense, it's uh, very good to see that uh, Siegel are making uh, their own in-house movements. Might be worth uh, remembering that uh, Japan went through uh, some of that same uh, image uh, thing around 50, 60 years ago now. Japanese cars used to be referred to as uh, rice cookers. And it's not about the ability for uh, Chinese uh, products. They make some of the very best things in the world right now. Probably most of the screens or devices uh, you guys are watching this video on uh, are made in China, as are the cameras I made this uh, video with. In my experience, uh, the biggest problem uh, with the Chinese product uh, is uh, quality control. And we'll get back to that. Let's just uh, see how uh, the balance uh, oscillates. That looks just fine. All right, then we can uh, put uh, the trainer wheels back together and uh, continue our discussion a little bit. As I mentioned uh, in my experience, and I do buy things in bulk from China, and I'm also working on some other projects involving uh, Chinese uh, manufacturers. And uh, the main issue is uh, really about quality control that there seems to be very little focus on it. And you do get some, let's say, strange uh, experiences. I'm not sure if you noticed it, but uh, during the uh, disassembly of the automatic module, there was a hair there inside the module. And you, of course, saw this uh, blotch of uh, whatever it was on uh, the barrel. So these things just are very unnecessary. It gives you uh, a little bit of a bad image. And it's not that difficult to uh, avoid or minimize. It does come down to uh, the whole overall workplace culture, I think, and uh, the pride in the work. And it is part of every developing economy. There are pretty much always uh, quality control issues until you reach a certain uh, maturity. And that's probably something I will see increase very rapidly in China, as uh, they also grow very rapidly. Although there's a pretty bad housing crisis right now, which uh, might get some pretty serious effects across the entire Chinese economy. But that's uh, for uh, people with better knowledge of that to discuss than me. I'm just a simple watchmaker. You see, there's a bit more slack in that uh, barrel bridge for the ar barrel arbor than we would like. That also shouldn't be part of a new watch. I will, however, not rectify it. I will leave the watch as it uh, is. So perhaps another uh, angle. Are these watches good to buy if you simply want to uh, learn how to work on watches? I would say this movement, uh, certainly not. I'll get back to that in a bit more detail as we start assembling uh, the calendar mechanism. But this was not a fun movement to work on. However, a basic watch from uh, Seagull, perhaps only with date, not with an open heart and so forth, definitely uh, a good idea. 
because you really want to uh, work on a watch that does run before you start uh, doing anything about it. That way uh, you do know that you have done something wrong if it doesn't work. By the way, in these close-ups, we can see there's a lot of stripes and scratches on the movement. I believe those are machining marks. But that should, of course, have been finished a little bit nicer, so you won't see them. Look at this. But again, it is a $100 watch. And for that price, it's still a great value, I think. Over on the dial side, we're going to put together the keyless works. As mentioned, uh, that is very straightforward. Very standardized keyless works. As I mentioned initially, I will give away this watch. The only thing you need to do in order to uh, compete for uh, winning it is uh, to subscribe and leave a comment in the comment field for this video. Then I will use a randomized uh, content picker to uh, choose the winner among uh, the subscribers that have commented. And the winner will then be announced on uh, Saturday 27th of August at uh, the standard time I uh, publish my videos. That's uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon Central European time. And given all the scams that have been running in the commentary fields of videos, what I will do, I will announce the name, the tag of the commenter. And that commenter will have to contact me on the mail address I give. And then I will ask the winner to post another comment that will then prove that it's the correct winner. So no one uh, send any money or anything to any scammers. We don't want to do that. The winner of the watch uh, will have to uh, pay for uh, shipping. And that's uh, typically around uh, 45 uh, euros. Last uh, thing about uh, the giveaway. This is uh, completely uh, my responsibility. It has nothing to do with YouTube uh, as uh, an entity. This is a giveaway of uh, this watch from my channel to uh, one lucky winner. On a separate note, uh, I do notice that uh, the light wasn't really good enough in this video. I did uh, quite a lot of this work uh, late at night and I didn't put on extra lights, so uh, now I know. Now with the train assembled, uh, let's uh, wind it a little bit and see how it spins. Looks like a tiny wobble there in uh, the center uh, seconds wheel. What we do want to see the escape wheel uh, stop and recoil slightly the other way. So that looks uh, good. All right, then we can put uh, the pallet fork back on. Quite interesting uh, with this uh, open heart. That means you have quite a lot less uh, real estate to work with, of course. Another uh, interesting thing is that uh, the previous video I published was of uh, Patek Philippe. And uh, there is a difference in the finishing level. But there's also a difference in the price. I kind of like to say that uh, Patek without uh, the finishing would be a psycho. I don't think it would be a seagull. But again, value for money, I think uh, this is a pretty good option. 
All right, putting some uh, grease on uh, the exit palette. Given that it's a low bit movement, uh, we could use oil as well. Now, as I was doing this, I noticed uh, another little quality control issue. This is a burr in the screw hole. Should obviously not be there because it comes off relatively easily and then it's yeah, in danger of uh, doing something bad to the movement. And it's very close to the balance. Anyway, let's get the balance back in and see uh, how this uh, watch runs now. Honestly, don't expect it to run uh, very differently from what it did before uh, running through it. Let's give it a wind and uh, put in some oil in the oil sinks. We're using a relatively thick oil for uh, the wheels closer to the barrel. And then we're using a thinner oil for the wheels that rotate fast. And on the time grapher, it runs uh, very nicely, to be honest. I didn't regulate it uh, at all. I did notice there's a bit of a difference in the different positions, but uh, yeah, not going to expect too much from a $100 watch. So I would be very happy with that. Now, I said that uh, this is not a movement I would uh, recommend anyone who's uh, starting out with uh, watchmaking. And the reason is uh, how the whole uh, calendar uh, thing is uh, done. It's not complicated from a logical point of view. I mean, uh, you have uh, the hour wheel that drives everything. But there's a lot of floating parts and a lot of uh, tricky uh, wire springs. And also, given that you have so many screws of so many different sizes, I'm pretty sure I misplaced a couple of screws here and there, because uh, there's no uh, manual anywhere that I can find at least. On each side for uh, the correctors, you have this, uh, yeah, I'm not even sure what to call them. But they are to uh, contain those uh, wire springs. You have two wire springs in each of those uh, little uh, holders. And the date wheel and the weekday wheel simply uh, float on the plate. And that's never a good thing for uh, stability. It's of course done to uh, make the movement uh, less thick. But maybe they should have thought of that uh, before they made the base plate itself uh, half a centimeter thick. I think that train has left the station. That ship has gone out. Or whatever you say. Whenever we have a wheel with teeth like this, there will be a pusher. Pushers are held in place uh, on a pivot and then uh, with these uh, wire springs. And then we have some stronger wire springs for the correctors. Now, I did one uh, stupid thing here. The screws for the correctors uh, can be screwed down. I should have done that. Steady. Shh. No one breathe. And then trying to make everything float the proper way underneath these uh, plates is a bit of a struggle. But eventually it does all fall into place. And with everything in place, we put a little tiny quantity of oil on uh, the jumpers. And then before putting the dial on, we want to make sure uh, the calendar works do work. 
So both a weekday and the date. Of course, both with the crown and with the correctors. And that looks just fine. Last thing before we put uh, the dial back on are these uh, bridges uh, for this uh, flywheel. They also have blued screws. A little bit reminiscent of this uh, Ebdoma watch I did a long time back. All right, with the last screw in place, we're ready to uh, put the dial back on. It's a pretty nice looking dial. Somewhat uh, generic uh, perhaps, but uh, what can you expect for uh, this price? For the hands, we can see that they are actually heat blued. You see that on the back. But uh, they certainly added a little bit of uh, extra color. So, um, yeah, looks nice, but perhaps a little bit too shiny. The correctors work as they should. The way the movement is constructed, uh, the weekday and the date are not going to flip over at the same time. And as we see, the weekday also flips over in two steps. So what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, the hour hand at 12 o'clock, midnight rather, when the weekday flips over to the new day. And then as always, we need to uh, check that uh, the hour hand doesn't uh, touch anything. These two subdials are not really sunk. But there is enough space, so that's uh, fine. With the hour hand at midnight, we put uh, the minute hand on the full hour. And again we check. And then the last one for the second set. One uh, strange thing though. I do not understand why they have this hyphen in the seagull. Seagull is not written with a hyphen. And the official name of the company does not have a hyphen in Seagull. It's a Tianjin Seagull watch company and there's no hyphen. So I really don't understand that. But that's a small peeve, I suppose. So we see the movement is uh, quite a lot too small, obviously, for the case. So we're using this uh, plastic uh, spacer ring. And that ring actually has a couple of flexible flaps that the pushers in the case then use to press into the pushers in the movement. So it's a little bit uh, different, but that's how it is. Let's get the automatic module back together. And then we can place that as well, and then we're pretty much done with the watch. We can see the automatic module only winds the movement in one direction. Counterclockwise. That's not necessarily a bad thing. 
It does mean that the rotor will spin freely in a clockwise direction. But from an efficiency point of view, it should be uh, plenty enough. One thing I noticed with the automatic module was that uh, the tension was very high. So when you place it like this and then uh, wind it a little bit to make sure that the teeth mesh, it really wanted to jump away. Not a big issue, but a little bit uh, unexpected. Finally, the rotor. It's a ball bearing rotor. Which means we uh, do want to lubricate it a little bit with a special uh, lubricant for ball bearings. And that's the so-called uh, Lubetta V106. Simply put uh, a screwdriver into uh, the liquid and then let it run off into the ball bearing. Of course, make sure the screwdriver is uh, very clean before doing so. All right, let's get the case back on and the strap. And then let's uh, have a look at the watch on the wrist. And there we have it. I think it's a very good value for money watch. Looks very nice, I think. For that price, I don't think you can uh, go wrong. And if you want to win this exact watch, remember to subscribe, like and comment. And then you will know on Saturday, 27th of August. Hope you liked this video. We'll be back with a normal video in uh, not very long. Until then. Ta-ta.